In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Today we're celebrating Friday of the first week of Lent. As we gather in God's presence, preparing ourselves for the celebration, let us ask for God's mercy and healing in our lives. Lord Jesus, your mighty God and Prince of Peace, Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the Son of God and the Son of Mary. Christ have mercy, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord have mercy, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant your, that your faithful, O Lord, we pray, may be so conformed to the paschal observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly will be begun may bear fruit in the souls of all. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, If the wicked man turns away from all the sins he committed, if he keeps all my statutes and does what is right and just, he shall surely live, he shall not die. None of the crimes he committed shall be remembered against him. He shall live because of the virtues he has practiced. Do I indeed derive pleasure from the death of the wicked, says the Lord God? Do I not rather rejoice when he turns from his evil way that he may live? And if the virtuous man turns from the path of virtue to do evil, the same kind of abominable things that the wicked man does, can he do this and still live? None of his virtuous deeds shall be remembered. Because he has broken faith and committed sins, because of this he shall die. You say the Lord's way is not fair. Hear now, house of Israel, is it my way that is unfair? Or rather, are not your ways unfair? When someone virtuous turns away from virtue to commit iniquity and dies, it is because of the iniquity that he committed that he must die. But if the wicked, turning from the wickedness he has committed, does what is right and just, he shall preserve his life. Since he has turned away from all the sins he, that he committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. Hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice, to my voice in supplication. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, Lord, who can stand? But with you is forgiveness that you may be revered. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? I trust in the Lord. My soul trusts in his word. My soul waits for the Lord more than sentinels wait for the dawn. Let Israel wait for the Lord. If you, Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? For with the Lord is kindness, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he will redeem Israel from all their iniquities. If you, O Lord, mark iniquities, who can stand? The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I tell you, unless your righteousness surpasses that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to your ancestors, you shall not kill, and whoever kills will be liable to death. But I say to you, whoever is angry with his brother will be liable to judgment. And whoever says to his brother, Raka, will be answerable to the Sanhedrin. And whoever says, you fool, will be liable to fiery Gehenna. Therefore, if you bring your gift to the altar and there recall that your brother has anything against you, leave your gift there at the altar, go first and be reconciled with your brother, and then come, offer your gift. Settle with your opponent quickly while on the way to court. 
Otherwise, your opponent will hand you over to the judge, and the judge will hand you over to the guard, and you will be thrown into prison. Amen, I say to you, you will not be released until you have paid the last penny. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. We like the first part of this reading from Ezekiel. If we repent of all the bad deeds that we've done, then we're okay. We're going to be saved. We don't like the part, however, if we do a considerable or perhaps a lifetime of good and we make a mistake at the end, that that one mistake could lead to our condemnation. So we like to accumulate the sum total of our goods, good deeds that we do, that are going to uh, swing the scales in our favor at Judgment Day. And we want to ignore and we don't mind the fact that God's mercy would overlook all that if we have a change of heart and repent at the end. So if our lives are a mixture of good and bad, we are really got to pray that God punches our tickets on the good day versus the bad day. I'm not sure that this is exactly how God operates, that he arbitrarily punches our ticket and what we're doing at that moment at that time is the thing that determines our salvation or our condemnation. We do believe that God has mercy. But there's something to be said about this analogy, that we need to be conscious of what's going on in the particular moment and not living in the past or in the future. So because we human beings are often rooted in more in the past or in the future, we might think that we don't need to do the right thing all the time here and now because we've got a future by which we can change our lives around or maybe we think that we've done so much in the past it doesn't matter if we play hooky every now and then. Logic would say we would have those things in our favor. But God might realize or see it's a case that we can't, we don't live in the past or in the future, and that we human beings only have the present moment to make any real decisions or actions in our lives. And so if that's the case, if that's the scenario, we really need to pay attention and make sure that we're doing the right thing at every moment, regardless of how much backlog of good or evil we're trying to contend with. An analogy of this, of this might be is considering a relationship. Somebody might be married for 20 years and then wake up one day and their spouse wants a divorce. And you might look at those 20 years of supposed wedded bliss. Does that mean that you're still married even though the spouse is adamant about wanting a divorce. They can't stand your guts anymore. So really isn't it kind of the emotion at that moment that kind of defines whether or not the marriage exists at that point. And I'm not getting into the details of sacramental marriage. I'm just talking about how people operate emotionally. Conversely though, if somebody is really kind of in a rotten marriage and at some point they wake up and smell the coffee. They realize the bad that they've done, how much harm they've done, and they are suddenly committed to the marriage and confess their love. Odds are if the spouse that knew how bad off the marriage was all along continued to love their spouse and knew the day would come when he or she would turn around, they would be rejoicing at that day and probably be less likely to hold the backlog over his or her head, saying, I'm not going to rejoice until you've worked back and earned back everything. So emotionally, we don't necessarily deal with baggage as much as we do the immediacy, the value of the moment that we have in the present. And so I think that these passages are meant to challenge our human nature that we have resistance to do things, we have momentum, and we think that I've done enough good things, I have enough good stored up for the future, I don't have to pay attention. I don't have to strive so hard at the present moment or in the future. 
And really, once you start to do that, it indicates that we no longer have a relationship with God that's based upon desire or love. It's based upon some economy that God doesn't necessarily subscribe to. So when Jesus comes along with the parable about the workers and the ones that go into the field at the last minute are paid the same amount as those that paid the full day, it doesn't add up for our logic, but it may be portraying what God sees, how God operates, and what God values. So the lesson here is don't bank on what the past does or what you hope the future will have holding for you. Instead, we got to live according to each moment. Dig deep, reconnect with the love that drives us, and follow our heart at that moment, not hoping for the future or the past to bail us out. With confidence in our merciful Father, we bring our prayers and petitions. For Pope Francis and bishops across the world, May the Lord guide them this Lent in shepherding their flocks, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may the Holy Spirit be their guide in treating their people with basic human dignity, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who are preparing to join the church at Easter, may the Lord's grace be upon them, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For Mary Jean Kaleo Roby, for whom this Mass is offered, and for all those who have died, may they soon reside eternally in the merciful arms of Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, hear the prayers we offer through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we receive this bread we offer you. For through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, or through your goodness, we receive this wine we offer you. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which in your power and kindness you willed us to be reconciled to yourself and our salvation to be restored through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift him up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For by your gracious gift each year, your faith will await the sacred Paschal feasts with joy of minds made pure, so that more eagerly intent on prayer and on the works of charity and in participating in the mysteries by which they have been reborn, they may be led to the fullness of grace that you bestow on your sons and daughters. And so with the angels and archangels, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, 
and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Lawrence, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and we praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but in the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us anew, O Lord, and cleansing us of old ways, take us up into the mystery of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God.